What is going on, y'all? It's your boy Tiki, back at it again. And today, we're gonna do a little bit of a different video. In the last video, I know I said that I was transitioning to my shop content slash motorcycle content, uh, but I thought that we could at least keep it a little bit truck related on this channel since it is my day job and I can still talk about the stories I have with trucking. And I thought of a really good idea for a video today. And that idea is talking about the pros and cons of being a local driver in a day cab. Kind of in comparison to being a OTR driver in the lower 48 in a sleeper cab. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about those pros and cons today after I get out of the truck though. We're wrapping up the day, I'm picking up a trailer from one of my delivery locations and we're headed back to the warehouse and we're clocking out for the day. And we'll go ahead and continue this after I clock out. So see you guys in a bit. Now I'd be lying if I said that I didn't enjoy being home every single day. Because I do. I enjoy going in, clocking in, doing my job, and then clocking out when I'm done with my work, and then go home, pursue my dreams, be a couch potato, see my family, all of the above. That's one of the pros of being a local driver in a day cab, is that I get to be home every single day. Now, I know a lot of you super truckers are gonna be saying stuff like, oh, you're not a true trucker because true truckers like to be on the road all the time and see the open road and drive no matter what. I get it, you know, that's, it's not everybody's cup of tea. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed my time over the road, being able to see new things I haven't been able to see before. But again, if you watched my last video, there was a couple of circumstances and situations that led to me needing to be able to be home every single day, so. Now that I'm home every day, I freaking love it. So I got this cool little 360 cam. Uh, I think this is one of the ways that I'm gonna be capturing content while I'm on the bike right now because I no longer have a GoPro. As you can see, I have an iPhone. With this camera, I also recorded a backing in a very tight and difficult spot, which is gonna bring me to my next pro about being a local driver in a day cab. So let's go ahead and hit the road. We're gonna to go to the shop and we'll continue from there. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys, so I wanna apologize ahead of time if my audio sounds like crap right now, uh, but that's because I'm using this cheap headset Bluetooth to record the audio that for this right now but I figured it's the only way you guys can you know listen to me talk while I'm riding for now what I'm gonna end up doing right now is while I'm on the way to the shop I'm gonna show you guys footage of me backing with this 360 camera and that tight situation that second pro of being a local driver in a day gap and I'm sorry I'm becoming repetitive is that with the shorter wheelbase of having a day cap you don't have to deal with the nuances of having a longer wheelbase, which means you can turn tighter in smaller backing situations and it'll be a lot easier to maneuver. While we're on the way to the shop, let's go ahead and zip over to that video of me backing in a tight situation. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so we're gonna time this backing. I'm not racing, I'm not in a rush. Three, two, one, go. All right, we're not in a rush today. We're just gonna back. The whole name of this game with backing is patience. So you definitely have to be patient when you're backing into doors and stuff. Do not rush. If you rush, you're going to hit something and you're just gonna get angry when you rush. So you literally have to take your time. So, 15 here. Turn off my headlights. It's a weird setup here. We gotta watch out for that rock wall. For sure. Waiting for that guy to get back in his truck. Don't wanna squash him if I accidentally hit his truck, you know? Okay, here we go. I 
I know uh, I noticed on social media a lot of people talk smack about rookies looking out the window and looking back and not using their mirrors instead. But it is what it is, man. Do what you gotta do to be able to back and not hit anything. So you gotta watch out for this rock wall here. My trailer's already almost halfway through the hole. And I'm not gonna lie, I've disrespected that rock wall a couple of times. Definitely gonna have to do a pull up here. And that's all I get to pull up. Lining up the outside of my uh, tandem tires to that yellow line. Angle still bad, so I gotta pull up again. Ugh. I think that was my third time pulling up. I'm not sure. I'm not even counting. Remember, take your time, it's not a race. Almost there. Cool. So now, I'm gonna pivot myself a little bit. Pretty much lined up to the door. I just want to make sure I am 100% in the hole. So these lines aren't spaced properly. The outside of the outside tire, pretty much the sidewall of the outside tires of my tandems, they're both on the edges, the outside edges of the line. it in neutral slide forward like an inch and the reason I do that is uh, some locations I've gone here plenty of times so I know what it's like here but some locations that you back your trailer into uh, if you squeeze yourself up onto that dock they can't get the dock plate out and they'll come out and they'll tell you hey can you move forward like an inch or two so that way we can get the dock plate up and we can unload your truck so happened a couple of times while I was here I figured that when you bump the dock roll forward like an inch or two and you'll be good they'll have plenty of room to bring that dock plate up so but enough talking I didn't even check the timer stopped the timer at five minutes and 33 seconds so we were able to back into this tight spot uh, in five minutes and 33 seconds with a day cap now I promise you if you guys throw me into a sleeper cab and try to get me to back in here I'm probably gonna take somewhere around 15 minutes or so because uh, I'm just so used to the day cabs now all right we are at the shop I hope you guys enjoyed that little backing video 
Again, I'm gonna brush up on what that pro was, and that pro is the wheelbase of a day cab is a lot shorter than the wheelbase of a sleeper, making it easier for you to back into situations that are tight, kind of like that. Now, granted, there are a lot worse places to back than what I showed in that last video. I've seen a bunch of videos of people on the East Coast just beasting through the city with cars zooming all around them, having to blind side into a very tight spot. I'm not saying what I did was extremely difficult and the most difficult. What I'm saying is that that is one situation that a day cab can help you out. That's all, that's all. Now to take a break from the pros and cons really quick, just so I could tell you guys what it is that I'm doing on a daily basis. Following up, I know it's been almost a month or it has been a month since I've uploaded my last video. So let's go ahead and start here. So I've always been into motorsports, which is motorcycles, cars, lifted trucks, off-roading, drifting, all of the above. I've also always been into modifying the things that I have, like the cars that I've had, the trucks that I've had, um, and the motorcycles that I've had. One key thing that comes to modifying vehicles is paint, colors, whatever. I know a lot of people in the car scene are utilizing vinyl wrap. That's something that I have learned in the past and I have vinyl wrap vehicles that I've owned in the past. And one thing that I've done a couple of times that I haven't really mastered was painting, auto body stuff. And that's what I got this shop for. So I had a space away from home uh, where I can pretty much paint everything. So um, right here, I've got one of my buddy's bikes parts here. He's got brand new saddlebags, a front fairing, uh, rear fender, center uh, tank dash, whatever you want to call that. Uh, but we are going to be doing a custom paint job on his bike, uh, specifically a road glide. So I will be showing a lot more of that on the channel. So if you guys sit tight, I promise you I'll have updates on that. A couple of things that I've already done so far is right here i painted a helmet and a nitrous bottle to match for a 67 nova he said you have free reign on whatever design you want to do just surprise me all i want is black and violet so uh, like a deep violet it looks almost purple in the pictures you can see here but uh that's what he wanted that's one of the jobs that i've gotten done so far yeah just to give you guys an example of the kind of stuff that i am doing here at this shop I know one of the main things that I talked about in one of my past videos is that if you have a goal, if you want to achieve something, just go chase it. Just do it. It's better to try it and say that you didn't like it or try it and failed and end up realizing it's not for you than to say you wish you tried it. So uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. All right. So now back to the pros and the cons of being a local driver in a day cab. One of the cons that I noticed right away was the fact that it was a day cab so uh, in a day cab it's just two seats there's no sleeper in the back for you to lay down and pretty much relax while you wait for your stuff to get unloaded so a lot of my delivery locations that i have every single week it it takes them quite a bit of time it takes them a couple of hours by a couple of hours that can be anywhere from two hours all the way up to five hours maybe even six, it just depends. As you guys know this in the trucking industry, the heavier the load, the longer it's gonna take them to unload. And the more complicated the load, the more longer it's gonna take them to count the product in the trip. So I guess that brings us into a segue of what the con is, is the lack of space for you to relax while you wait these long hours for them to unload. Now, I've noticed other day cab drivers having different methods of relaxing while they wait for their stuff to get unloaded. A bunch of them that I've seen, they just sit in the driver's seat and they get like one of those eye covers, those sleeping masks or whatever, and cover their eyes and just sit in the seat, recline it as far as it can go, which is not much by the way. And they just knock out. I've tried that for a couple of months and my back started killing me. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, can't, I personally can't do it. So what did I do? As you guys can see here, I have a cooler in between the two seats and I have a couple of pieces of cardboard that I put up in each of the windows so that way I get some privacy while I lay down across both the seats and the cooler. And for a couple of hours, that's how I take a nap and rest in the day cab while I wait for everything to get unloaded. It looks really silly which is why I cut out cardboard that kind of fit the window so I can block out people from seeing me lay down in the day gap. 
But that's what lists one of our first cons of being a day cab driver. That's the part that I feel like sucks the most. When it sucks, cry me a river. I know, it's not a big deal. You just gotta learn to work with what you got, which is what I did. Another one of the cons that I deal with that I say kind of sucks, not too bad, is that it can get very boring. Now, I feel like I shouldn't have to elaborate, but I will. So being a local driver, you have consistent routes every single week. Usually, depends on what company you're with. Uh, but for me personally, I have the same route every single day, Monday through Friday, and it can get boring. There are some other variables in having consistent deliveries every week. Like if another driver calls in sick and I have to cover their delivery, then I'll do my delivery and I'll do theirs. It doesn't really happen that often, but it happens often enough to where I get to see something new every now and then. But that's about it. The one thing that I miss about being OTR in the lower 48 is that I got to see new things every single day. And even if I took the same highway four times in a month, there would always be something new happening on the highway and at your other deliveries. Like if you end up taking different deliveries over the same highway, the variable is always different because you don't know what's gonna happen at your end destination if it's a new place. So I think that's one pro of being an OTR driver is that you always get the variable of the unknown to keep you on the edge of your seat and keep you entertained. And you get to constantly learn something new every single time that you're out there. Whereas being a local driver, again, I deal with the same route every day. And at this point, I've been doing the same route for so long that if there are any hiccups, I'm already familiar with how to deal with them. So again, that's something that I miss about being OTR. I might be on the road again one day, but for now I'm local and we're having a good time so far. It might change things around if I get a little too bored, but. Don't hold me on that. That's one thing that I really, really miss now that I bring it up. There's something about being on the open road in the middle of nowhere that's super relaxing. And I feel like you can't really replicate that feeling anywhere else. Those of you who've been trucking for a while really understand what I'm talking about. But the same thing goes for everything else. There's nothing quite like feeling the freedom of riding on a motorcycle on an open road in the middle of nowhere. Same concept. Uh, it's the same thing with 18 wheels and two wheels, so I don't know. I guess we all can relate a little bit. Also, really quick, I just want to address the elephant in the room. Some of you who know what this is might be asking me questions. And before you guys get the chance to ask me a question, yes, I am prospecting with the club right now. But here's the thing. This channel is not going to be about the club life, okay? Um... I joined a club because I enjoy the camaraderie that comes with the club. And there's a bunch of other reasons I'm not going to go in depth with. But yes, I am prospecting with the club at the moment. But that's not what this channel is about. This channel is about riding motorcycles in general, enjoying the open road, and me running my shop. And we're going to sprinkle truck content here and there. I know I said that I was going to transition away from the trucking content, but I think I'm going to be keeping a little bit of it here and there. Most of you subscribe to me because of the fact that you were following the trucking journey and I feel like I gotta respect that. So I will be doing trucking content when I feel it is suitable and when I find something to talk about when it comes to trucking, just like today. Every now and then I think I might do a couple of videos when we do go on rides with the club because we do go to some pretty cool places. Like for example, before I became a prospect, we went all the way to California and it was my very first time riding a motorcycle in California, which is what I've always wanted to do. And now I think it's time that we address the last pro of being a local driver. The way you get paid as an OTR driver is usually by the mile. I'm specifically talking about company drivers. I'm not talking about owner ops because that's a whole new ball game. As a company driver that's OTR, majority of the time, depending on what company you're with, you're getting paid by the mile. So what, why does that make that a pro or a con? As a local driver, I get paid hourly. And regardless of how heavy my freight is for the day, majority of the time I get my full eight hours. Sometimes I work overtime and get 10 to 12 hours just depending on how heavy the freight is. So what pro are we talking about? The pro that we're talking about is consistency of the paychecks being a local driver. If there's a layover or something or some sort of problem with delivery, 
I still get paid the same because I work the same amount of hours. Even if my truck were to break down on the side of the road and I was waiting for a truck to come out to fix my truck or tow my truck away, I'm still getting paid for every hour that I'm sitting there. You break down in your truck as an OTR driver, you might get paid for the hours that you wait. I'm not sure how that works. I've never had that situation when I was a company driver. But what I've heard, and when I've asked the question when I work for some of the uh, past companies that you've seen on my channel, there was no pay if you didn't drive. I know there is layover pay, 50 bucks for every hour for three hours or something like that is what I've heard from one company. Um, like if you're waiting to deliver or if you're getting unloaded and there's a hiccup and it takes them a lot longer to unload, you're not getting paid past those three or four hours. If you're there for six, seven, eight hours, you're not getting paid for the latter half of that. Most of the time you're gonna know what your paycheck looks like when you're an OTR driver because when you get used to it, you're capable of figuring out how many miles you're gonna cover on a weekly basis. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really remember how many miles I used to do on a weekly basis because that is, it's almost been two years since I've been an OTR driver. But I do remember the fact that for the most part, if there were no hiccups in my deliveries, I'd be able to cover the same amount of miles about every single week. So my paychecks would look the same almost there would be some variables where i wouldn't be able to meet the same amount of miles i did the previous week or i drive more miles than i did the previous week and so you never really know what your week's going to look like there's so many variables an hourly if a load takes too long i get paid for every hour that i sit there that's one of the pros of being a local driver is that i know how much i'm getting paid next week and the week after and the week after that and I never make less than what I make on average every single week, unless I call in sick. You call in sick, you don't clock in any hours, you don't get paid for those hours. And that's what brings us to our conclusion today. For today's video, the pros and cons of being a local driver in a day cab and a little bit of the pros and cons of being an OTR driver versus a local driver, I guess. For those of you that were watching today's video that expected full on trucking content and didn't expect me to talk about like my motorcycle and stuff like that, I deeply apologize. But as it says in the title, it does say vlog. So it's not really an info video, it's more of a vlog video. So that pretty much concludes today's video. But before we completely stop this video, I want to bring one thing back to this channel that I really enjoy doing with you guys. And that is the Tiki word of the day. If you guys have any questions that you wanna ask me that I can answer in the next video, go ahead and use the word hashtag motorcycle. Hashtag motorcycle at the beginning of your comment or at the end, wherever. But be sure you ask your question in that comment and I'll pick and choose a question that is asked in the comment section of this video and I'll answer it at the beginning of the next video. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed watching today's video. If you guys found this video informational at all, or not even found it informational at all, but just liked it, go ahead and hit the like button down below. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you don't want to enter in today's word of the day to have your question answered in the next video, if you just want to talk about the stuff that we talked about today, go ahead and hit the comment section down below with what's on your mind and we can all talk about it. If you haven't subscribed yet, baby, what is you doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below only if you want to. I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. But if you want to subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It feels so good to be back. I miss doing this. But you know what time it is. Your boy Tiki is out. Peace.